So ultimately, Satan, the fallen cherub, is the culprit behind the work of the New World Order in all of its facets. The entities which directly guide humanity into working for Satan's cause are the fallen angels. Dr. Michael Heiser, an ancient language scholar, has written extensively on the Divine Council. They are the sons of God mentioned in Genesis 6, the angels that sinned mentioned in 2 Peter and Jude. They are the lowercase g gods who have had legal authority over various parts of the earth since antiquity. They are also the gods that accepted worship from people in the Old Testament, making them rebels to Yahweh God's kingdom. It is my firm belief that they are the aliens, ascended masters, and other spiritual entities deceiving mankind into creating Satan's kingdom on earth. Whether they manifest with bodies or are simply spiritual beings, I don't know. But the reality is that I don't think anyone would willingly work for Satan if they knew what they were getting themselves into. And thus we live in an age of deceit. You need to understand that there are these divine beings out there that were part of the Heavenly Council, that are extremely powerful, and that some of these beings have fallen. Because what that psalm is talking about if you read the whole Psalm 82, is that they are oppressing the poor. They are not judging rightly among the poor. Yahweh gave these, these celestial beings authority over certain parts of humanity and they were abusing their people. They were allowing the poor to be victimized. And so he's saying unto them that, you know, even though thou art gods, you will fall like the princes and die like men. And again, the wages of sin is what? Death. So even these beings can die. While many of the esoteric New Age and New World Order advocates continue to preach their solution to the world's problems, there is a true hope that is found in a message that comes explicitly from the true creator of this universe. The real spiritual and physical upgrade that the New Age spiritual evolutionists and transhumanists seek to attain has already been given to us in the gospel message of Jesus Christ. The transhumanist movement, um, it, it really is a cover. It's a cover for the, the far more sinister event that's coming. And I, I, think, I think on the one hand it, it provides the technology to make some of these, these things happen. But it's also a man saying, look, we can do it. We can truly pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. We can take advantage of our own, uh, our own evolution. We don't have to wait. Because again, if, if it's predicated on we've evolved this far, why shouldn't we continue evolving? And if we, can, if we have the technology to overcome death, to overcome disease, I mean, why wouldn't we, right? I mean, that sounds right. If there's a little baby that's dying of some awful disease, and we have the power to go in and actually rearrange the DNA and the genes and make things right, wouldn't we be barbaric not to do that? See? So this becomes sort of the, the heartthrob that we like, oh, we better do this, right? right? And, you know, I think there probably are some, some decent things that could be done. Like anything, any kind of technology, there's always room for good. Right. But I really think that we're getting into an area that we should not play with. Because right. we're now rearranging the Legos that God created. Right. And he's like, don't rearrange those. We're going into the source code. That's what we are. I mean, think about DNA. What is it? It's source code. Right? God made the source code. Through sin, the source code got kind of scrambled and mixed up a bit. Through the incarnation, the cross, and the resurrection, God has promised to restore our source code to how it ought to be, and probably even upgrade us a bit. Do you think that uh, there was a genetic, something genetically changed with mankind in the fall? Yeah, Genesis 3? yeah I do actually. Okay. And it's fascinating that you ask that because the even evolutionists have pointed that there was some, some record of an event in the life of the original man. The record of the event actually did affect something. The, the event was the fall, okay? And the fall, uh, so, and, and at, at the fall of man is when all of creation became corrupt as well. Because everything 
came out of the earth or from man, right? So Eve, of course, came out of man. Man came out of the dirt itself, out of the dust. And there's this connection. In Hebrew, you see the word Adama is talking about the soil or the land, and Adam, who comes out of that. So it's kind of like God takes all this dirt, he puts it together, he blows his spirit into man. And whatever happens to man, that the condition of man will be the condition of the earth. So if man is good, the earth is good. If man is decayed and corrupted, the earth becomes corrupted. And Re Romans chapter 8 speaks about that, that the creation itself is groaning, right? Just eagerly waiting with this, this earnest expectation of the revelation of the sons of God. When Jesus came, he had the X chromosomes given to him by his mother, but his father, genetically speaking, is the Holy Spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit provided X's and a Y chromosome because the Y is passed from father to son. The, 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 women do not have the Y chromosome. So he did not have Adam's Y chromosome. So he got a new Y chromosome. And so Jesus becomes the second Adam. Right? Adam is the first, right. Jesus is the second Adam. And now to be part of God's kingdom, we have to be reborn. We have to have uh, a, a new birth, become a new creation. We're going to be part of that second Adam. We're all born naturally as sons of the first Adam. Right. But we have to be born again as sons of the second Adam. Right. So, and I really think that all this is going to ultimately be uh, realized in a new DNA package for us. Over the span of 2,000 years, we have been given a collection of 66 books written by 40 people in various cultures, time periods, and languages. Today we call this collection the Holy Bible. Upon investigation, we find that these 66 books combine to form a message to humanity from a being outside of space and time by writing history before it happens. The Bible predicted the advent of the New Age movement and the New World Order thousands of years ago. It also tells us of a man who will rule this world empire and what his true intentions will be. All of this has been in the works for thousands of years, and it all hinges on Satan's ability to deceive mankind. The Apostle Paul in the first century AD wrote several letters to early churches, which are now called the Epistles. The far application of these letters are a clear warning for us today. It is a warning of impending deception that will influence the whole world. Paul warns us of this deception in Ephesians 5, where he states, Let no one deceive you with empty words. Then, in his first letter to the Corinthians, he again tells us, Do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. In a letter to the Romans, he describes those who willingly live in lies when he writes, Their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit, the poison of vipers is on their lips. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. In a letter to Timothy, Paul clearly describes the world we see today when he writes, The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits in things taught by demons. In the second letter to the Thessalonians, Paul describes the New World Order and the Antichrist when he wrote, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They are perishing because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will 
believe the lie, and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. The Apostle John, while in prison on the island of Patmos, had a vision of the end times and the deceiving entities that will walk the earth, stating, And the great dragon was cast out, the ancient serpent who is called Devil and Satan. He who deceives the whole habitable world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He deceives my own people who dwell on the earth because of the signs he was granted to do in front of the beast, saying to those who dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast who had the sword wound and lived. Jesus Christ himself gave his discourse of the end times when he stated clear warnings of the signs of the end. Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. Jesus Christ died for the sins of all mankind. That means he died for the New Agers, the Freemasons, those in the Illuminati, the world elite, the Luciferians, the Satanists, and even me and you. Now we all have a choice. We can live in darkness, allowing evil to enter our lives and unwillingly support the work of Satan and his fallen angels. Or we can let Jesus into our hearts and be spiritually saved forever. There are no prerequisites, rituals, or tests for accepting this gift of salvation. All one needs to do is ask honestly for Jesus to come into their heart. Remember these truths. God loves you. God cares about you. God wants nothing more than to know you personally and save you. Sin separates people from each other and God. Jesus died for your sins and rose again. You can receive Jesus now and know God's love right at this very moment. I pray for you all and hope the truth will indeed set you free. Thanks for your time. Come quickly, Lord Jesus.